I'm now 20-40 in my le right eye. I'm still 100-400 in my left eye, but God's healing that too. My vision has increased. Uh, every day's a better, better sight for me, and I'm just praising God for that fact. This guy just gets around like with cat-like quickness. <laughs> I mean, you'd never know if you didn't know his testimony that he had been legally blind. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't need any help. A brother can find a cup of coffee anyway. That's right. <laughs> I'm here to tell Amen. you right now. That just to get back to Doc for a second, if I could just understand what he said. Uh, basically, you, uh, given at your present age, you just pretty much couldn't handle a double-decker. You're, you're right. Uh, you know, the Lord promised us 70 years. And I uh, passed that five years ago. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, but the uh, prophet uh, Isaiah was told, you know, when do I retire? And he says, you know, when the bones come back up. And so that means I guess I don't retire. You don't retire from the ministry no matter what you do. Yeah. Yeah. You're Amen. always out there to witness to folks That's and right. share what God has done for you. And the more trials and tribulations you personally go through and the more experiences you have, the more you know that it's it's the Holy Spirit's work in the people that make things work out. and. Uh, Sergeant just um, he is uh, he really is a blessing you know I'm I'm sitting here I'm not a novice that's why I say how old I am I'm not a novice I've seen hundreds of people I used to be a jail chaplain I was one of the original jail ch uh, prison chaplains for Florida and uh, I've seen the so-called uh, jailhouse uh, conversions you know right and you have you have church house conversions too that are not real, mm -hmm. and uh, you and and I know there's a big thing about whether they were really saved, not saved, or something like that. But I don't want to get into that. But I want to say that you can tell when a person really has a uh, what am I trying to say here has a a meeting with Christ. Okay, there's a song I've been listening to lately. Is I met the Master it brings me to tears, mm -hmm. and uh, the the uh, a group of, of singers on the um, sing it but when a person meets the master there's a change in their life and there's people who say they're church people they say they're christians and so forth but they're not they don't have the same father they don't have the same relationship and when you try the spirit of god it's not there it's not there and um and even when you know sarge never he never told me well i'm a christian i'm a great guy and all this never did that he when he came to my office uh, uh, um, not too long ago by the way his conversion started i think when the lord had me put him in the hospital if you remember the dates here in september the 16th 2011 um he stayed in the hospital for a while i think the lord had to calm him down a little bit and wake him up and tell him hey you don't need to be here anymore and that's when he turned to the Lord and uh, quit his drinking, quit his smoking, quit his drugs, um, quit uh, other things that he was involved in that was a problem uh, that a lot of men have, and and uh, just he was washed, you know. He, Amen. he was uh, washed by the blood of Christ, and um, I told him, I said, I hope he has experienced the rest of his life that I've had because when Jesus gets a hold of you, he turns, he he can, he'll turn you every way but loose. And once you know that you're you're in his hands and in his protection, this is what happens to you. So when you get old, like <clears throat> Sarge said I was a while ago, then, uh, you know, you can look back at it, you know, and you're not afraid to say that this is what God can do for you. He's got a lot to offer. I, I, I know that he's going to make it. He's a joy to me. He's a joy to everybody. He's a joy to you guys. Oh, my I gosh, I can see yes. that in your face. Um, I, you gotta, might have to calm him down a little bit in real life to keep him. Uh, it's all right to mention the church, right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, no pun intended, Sarge. But when you've when you've met the Father, you can see it in somebody's eyes that they've changed. Amen. And I, I, from the first time I shook hands with that gentleman, I knew from the first night that he walked into real men, into mm -hmm. real life, and I thought this guy has undergone some radical surgery <laughs> spiritually. He's a genuine. He's a genuine convert. He's a, a person who. Uh, not only thinks it but lives it and top it off we got a way to go with him yet because he was in the air force but we'll fix uh. that you know but <laughs> but he uh he, he lost his competency uh through all this for the military and they took away his rights and privileges to do his own business and he came to me a couple months ago now and he says i want to get my rights back he says i need a letter that says i'm competent and I can honestly tell you, I've had one of my associates, who he wasn't too sure if she'd do it, uh, she did a company set test on him, and he aced it. I Congratulations, am, Sarge. When I put my name on it's this God. piece of paper in front of me Amen. that said he needed to be committed, I'm also putting my name on a piece of paper that says he, he's competent. 
And so we're going to get that privilege back for them, too. So oh, fantastic. You know, it's, it's a, amazing what God can do in a person's life that lets them. Mm-hmm. Do you find, Doc, that uh, you know folks that have, have served, and thank you for your service, by the way, I want to do that yes. first and foremost. Do you find that uh, having never served, I can't really appreciate what a serviceman goes through in, in, in training, but I've, you know, I've seen either. movies. Right, I've, I've seen movies, too. I you have. know, and, and uh, they teach you not to be a wimp. Mm-hmm. You know, and depend on your your inner strength and and become your own man and to deal with things and and do you find that coming from a you know uh, and Sarge particular case you know a, a pretty severe military background that conversion ratio or um, what am I asking you I guess maybe a, they're a harder reach that's that's what I think you're asking well I can uh, I think what uh, the Lord has blessed me so much is I've been there done that. You know, you sit on the side of a hill in a foxhole, and you wonder if the guys are going to come up here and shoot your throat, your, slit your throat. You can be macho. I've always been macho as a gang leader in Orlando for a while, you know, and real strong. I learned 27 ways to kill a person and and a whole lot of stuff. I had 62 fights with my gloves on in the service and never lost one of them. So you can say I was a pretty macho guy, but when you're sitting on the side of that hill and you can't hear anything or see anything, and you're waiting to see if those flares are going to go off and somebody's coming up that hill, you know, scared the living daylights out of you if you're not a Christian particularly, okay? Mm-hmm. And so um, I found out that um, uh, it didn't make it you, – you, it's like going to a restaurant and saying a blessing. If you're really close to the Lord and you and you love the Lord, you know you want to say a blessing, the restaurant, where it's at, doesn't make any difference. You're going to say the blessing. Oh, amen. amen. So yeah. when you're a serviceman, when you go in there, they do give you the macho thing, especially the Marines. <laughs> Not the Air Force so much, I think, but the Marines. <laughs> oh. May I say I I was very good at foxhole prayers. God get me out of this fight and fair fight or whatever's happening, and I uh, I will serve you, or I'll give up my drugs, I'll give up my alcohol. Then I'd go right back to it the next mm-hmm. day or the next minute. And, and Sarge is right, and a lot of t- I have a lot of guys like that in the service that I met and knew personally. I can tell you stories that make you cry from guys that got saved, you know, by corpsmen particularly were Christians who led them to the Lord. Then they died in their service, but shot up right beside them mm-hmm. after they patched them up. But um, um, the, the question to ask you, are they harder? No. I think that people have a wrong idea because only God knows the heart and, and, and the person themselves. If, if a person uh, like Sarge wait all this time, but if a person, no matter who they are, is really seeking, you know, you can, you can be very young and seek something because you don't have it. You can be old and seek something because you don't have it. It depends on your, your, your heart's desire for what you really want. And that's why I think God answers. When you really are, come as a child, the Bible says, mm-hmm. when you come with that faith, that childlike presentation, it's real. Then um, I remember the night I got saved. <laughs> I just told the God, you, the God that you saved me, or, or I'm going out and get drunk tonight. That's where I was headed, and I just challenged God. And but He knew my heart because I'd been looking for Him for a long time. So I noticed that um, people like Sarge out there, they act tough. They they they're really cool, bad, and all that kind of stuff. But down deep in heart, they're scared to death. I'm a teddy bear. Yeah, he is a teddy bear now. He yeah. really is. That's yeah. one of the neat things about this this show is. And I call it the two by four upside the, the head. head. Yep. When, how did God speak to you? How did it? How did um, He find you? And there's so many different ways that God finds you. Right. And it's and, and, and that's that's the the thing though. You hear people say that I found God. It's not that way. It's the opposite way. God finds you. And you know, like He did with me, the two by four upside the head. I wasn't looking for nothing. And Pay attention, buddy. <laughs> and he got my attention with right. a two-by-four. That was amazing. You were saying something I wanted to comment on. Well, I hope you don't mind. Sure, uh, I'll go right ahead. When you first started, you say the way you get up in the morning and set your day. You know, and I, I tell this to my clients. I said, you can get up in the morning and say, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> or you can get up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord. Or thank you, And then I, quote the verses that you were quoting at the head of the show. I now get up in the morning when I said, oh, my God, another day. Now I, now I get up and say, God, thank you for a wonderful day and clean the sober day. Amen. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, this guy rings my phone off, and I love it. Hey, Fritz, this is Michael. How you doing? God bless you. I love you, man. <laughs> Michael, why'd you call? I don't know. God bless you. I love you, man. This is great. Have a great day. God bless you. I love you. 
you know, and it hangs up the phone, and I just love it, man. You're such a blessing, bro. You really are. I I had, when I started coming to a program, a fellowship, another fellowship, other than real life, I came out of addictions, I came out of alcoholism, I found people that loved me. I had no ability to love. I hated, Doc would tell you that, I threatened his life, and he's a teddy bear too. He loved me. He told me he loved me. But the fact is, I really hated, and I hated with a passion. Now I find every day I'm loving people, and loving people in, with alcohol and drug problems to try to bring them to Christ because that's the answer for their addictions, whether it be TV, sex, uh, sexual addictions, uh, alcohol or drug abuse, any addiction, food addiction. I'm fighting that right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, We have all got that problem, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Don't quit <laughs> stance. Preaching better about that, Doc. <laughs> the fact is that through all this, if we turn it over to God, give 100%, I now serve with real men. I, I frequent real men, real freedom. On Tuesday nights, I frequent seniors when they're off for a month, but I go to seniors group. I also go to uh, military ministry after that at, at uh, 7 o'clock, the seniors at 4 to 6. Then I go and four services on the weekends, and I can't get enough fellowship because everywhere I go, there's miracles happening. And it's just the grace of God that, again, I don't glorify Michael. I glorify Jesus Christ, yeah. my Lord and Savior. Hey, man, I thought I was busy, Mike. You try to catch up with this brother during the week. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my way to this. I'm on my way to that. Yeah, I got about 10 minutes in between I can talk with you, and then I'm on my way to this. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize the church had that many ministries. Well, he's doing we those did. and then some. I know it. <laughs> Military ministry and all that. I mean, that's fantastic. Amen. Well, we're about out of time, guys. That, is there anything else you'd like to add, Michael, Doc? Anything else? Man, we could talk all night to you guys. I don't having know a good time. how far this goes, uh, but uh, I think if you've got listeners out there that uh, are dealing with uh, these issues that uh, Sarge was issue, uh, dealing with, you know, and they need some help, they need to know how to get a hold of you guys or Sarge or somebody and, uh, you know, to let them know that this is not in China that we're at, mm -hmm. but we're in Claremont, Florida, and... Uh, we're all residents here, so if they need to get a hold, I suggest they get a hold of uh, somebody, especially if they've got the problem Sarge had, because I'll tell you what, he knows the answer. Amen. And they don't have to go pay me for the answer. You can go to Sarge. He'll do it free for you. <laughs> Funny that you would mention China, too, because we have had downloads in China. New recent today. Yeah, Colombia, Canada, Canada, Canada and uh, Nambia, Australia. South Africa, and Australia. Uh, Australia. Do folks get to write into you or call Absolutely. into you? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. Make sure we're, you did that. Because. We're going to start a call in format. Flee the Lord just, you know, this this format is really, we haven't really been led to, to do that yet, but mm -hmm. uh, we are set up for it via Skype, which is nice. We do have God Stories Radio at gmail.com if you want to send a note in, and we'll make sure Sarge or Doc gets it. Uh, we have on. our blog on uh, GodStoriesRadio.com that you can uh, make any comments, and, and we'll ask again if anybody has uh, any questions that they may have in regards to any of the sessions that they've heard. Give us any encouragement that, uh, you know, you listened to a session and it helped you. That would help encourage us as well to just uh, push us forward. We're also on Twitter at God Stories Radio, Facebook, Facebook.com slash God Stories Radio. So there's many, many ways you can get a hold of us, the Gmail, and we'll make sure either Sarge and Doc gets the information if you have specific private questions or whatnot. We'll get you the answers, we promise. Doc, we appreciate you being here. Sarge? Thank, thank you for having me. You the privilege. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Well, well, this has been God Stories Radio, Session 13. I'm almost sad session. that it's over. Yeah, really, Session 13. Really. <laughs> wow. It seems like it was just yesterday. I know it. We did one. God's just blowing it up. Yes, he is. Thank you, dude. Yes, thank you. Well, I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And God bless. God bless. God bless.